the hyper-realists, quite well known in the United States, are only a very few in France. At the foot of Hautille Hill, along the River Seine between Paris and Rouen, lives and works one of the best-known French hyper-realists, Hucleux, who draws inspiration from a nearby cemetery. His very precise works appear like photographs after summary examination, but one discovers, upon analysis, that they are more elaborate than true to life, accentuating the details that otherwise would go unnoticed. And that is exactly what makes of hyperrealism an art, with an almost hypnotic power of suggestion. building trade, city planning. Around Lyon railway terminal and stretching to the eastern confines of the capital is one of Paris's most impractical and insanitary districts, Bercy. To give new life to these 280 hectares, Paris has embarked on a huge city planning scheme. Several groups of office and apartment buildings have already been completed near the station, which will itself be remodeled with an underground network joining up with the Paris Metro. A small-scale model of the project has just been presented to the Parisian public. It will comprise 21,000 new flats surrounded by greenery. Charles de Gaulle Terminal. 28 kilometers north of the French capital is the third and largest of Paris's airports, the Charles de Gaulle Terminal at Roissy en France. Covering an area about one third as large as that of Paris, the new installations boast a terminal with seven passenger loading points. Cars have direct access to the central edifice through a spiral driveway leading to the parking area on the roof. Many new building techniques were used in the construction of the concrete terminal and the wooden framework of the annexes. Thus, the giant hangar built by the Aerial Transport Union called on techniques up to now reserved for smaller constructions only. It is 200 meters long and 120 meters wide. Six heavy carriers of the DC-10 class or nine DC-8s can be housed in the modular construction whose 24, 17 by 24 meter doors had to be assembled on the spot. UTA is the first French airlines to have transferred its facilities to the new airport along with the American TWA company. Approach control takes over several hundred kilometers from Paris. A few minutes before landing, the control tower takes over for the final phases of the operation. As of this year, the first Charles de Gaulle terminal at Roissy en France will handle 5 million passengers, which is only half the capacity it is expected to reach three years hence when the second terminal goes into service. <laughs> 
Ethology. Ethology is the science of animal behavior. Ethology is a science that got a slow start in France for reasons too lengthy to enumerate. It was born first in Germany and Holland with professors Lorenz and Tinbergen, who are both Nobel Prize winners. People were mainly interested in vertebrates, birds and mammals, but especially birds. In France, the study of insects, traditionally, is very developed. Thanks to the work of my former teacher, Professor Grasset, ethology finally started in France. And at present, we have a number of specialized laboratories, and other countries are beginning to take notice of us. My particular vices are ants and bees. And in the last 20 years, I'm finally getting to the point where I can write some accurate statistics on animals. I am particularly interested in the work of ants, whose seemingly incoherent individual efforts nevertheless give splendid collective results. For instance, when ants carry a blade of grass, you know that individually they really don't seem to know where to go next. And yet, they succeed in building anthills of two cubic yards capacity, which last a whole century. So it's evident that individual disorganization leads to collective organization. Thus, with his team of researchers, Professor Chauvin studies insect behavior in his laboratory near Rambouillet, west of Paris. The big problem, as in all sciences, is measuring. So we have to use very devious paths to achieve it. In a second apparatus, looking even more complicated than the first, ants are persuaded to pull on a thread which sets a scoop pump in motion, which drains one container into another. We can thus measure the work furnished by the ants by the quantity of water transferred. A number of devices for a research field which today has many unforeseen ramifications and outlets. It was discovered that ethology could become an applied science insofar as child psychology is concerned, for example. There is very little difference between a child before he speaks and a baby chimpanzee. On the other hand, phenomena such as rank and territorial defense are associated to ethology. Finally, we've learned to synthesize a whole number of disturbances which might very well, in a short time, lead to a new field of experimental psychiatry. From the study of animal behavior to that of man's motivations and instincts, ethology can bring grist to the science mill in a field which up till now has been practically unknown and which someday might regulate rapports between humans and their counterparts in other planets. Prehistory. The opening of the Lascaux Grottoes in southern France, discovered some 23 years ago, after millenniums of confinement, caused serious damage to the inestimable frescoes of this regular prehistoric museum because of atmospheric pollution and rock diseases, not to speak of damage wrought by human hands. To permit visitors and researchers to yet enjoy these rupestral drawings from a distant past, a team of artists set to work reproducing original sketches and paintings which will be exhibited close by in a setting similar to that of the caves. The operation brought up a number of delicate problems. The paintings were not done on plain surfaces, but followed the contours of the rock, so exact copies could only be done through a triangulation process. Moreover, colors whose composition was unknown had to be recreated by the trial and error method, and finally artists were authorized to spend only one hour a day in the grottoes. Two 
two sculptors, Pierre Weber and Bernard Angot, and two painters, Hai Sili and Monique Tetral, have been working for three years with a team of architects, reproducing the actual setting. The museum grotto of Lascaux will be 40 yards long and 8 yards high, like the celebrated Hall of the Bull. The Lascaux paintings, reproduced with natural coloring, manganese dioxide for black, hematite for red, ochre for yellows and browns, are born again for the visual pleasure of all, while the original works will be sheltered in the darkness and in the confined atmosphere of their permanently closed grotto.